There was a time when giants ruled the skies. Not dragons, not jets, airships. Massive floating leviathans, drifting through the heavens like silent gods. You've seen the images. The zeppelins. The dirigibles. The floating palaces of the early 20th century. They weren't just transportation. They were a vision of a different future. Quiet, graceful, running on buoyancy, not combustion. Capable of crossing oceans without a single runway. No sonic booms, no jet fuel. Just science, helium, or hydrogen, and sky. By the 1930s, airships were king. Germany's LZ-127 Graf Zeppelin made over 140 transatlantic flights. They had cabins, lounges, dining rooms. You weren't a passenger. You were a guest. And then, just like that, they disappeared. We're told it was the Hindenburg, 1937, Lakehurst, New Jersey. One catastrophic fire. 36 lives lost. The world watched it fall. And just like that, the dream was over. Or so they say. But here's what they don't talk about. Planes were faster, yes. But they were also louder, less comfortable, less fuel efficient. They needed massive infrastructure. They couldn't match the luxury, the lift, or the low cost of an airship. So, why switch? Some say it was fear. Others say it was business. The oil industry didn't like a clean alternative floating above their empire. The military didn't like untrackable vessels moving silently through the stratosphere. And the aviation lobby, funded by war and petroleum, saw no future in floating elegance when they could sell speed, steel, and scarcity. And that hydrogen scare? It didn't need to be the end. We had helium. Safe, stable, plentiful, especially in the U.S. But after the Hindenburg, the helium reserves were locked down. Coincidence or control? Now look around. We've got drones, jets, satellites, but no sky cities, no floating labs, no peaceful giants gliding over the land. We chose speed over serenity, commerce over elegance, warbirds over wonder. But the skies remember, and so do we.